Good morning everyone, welcome back to another day in New York. This is actually my last full day and uh, I'm trying to get that iconic vibe in New York. This looks good. <laughs> this is terrifying. I hate this. Good morning, Anna. Good, good morning. Good pizza, how many? <laughs> Look at how many vegetables. Yum. Mm. Quick lunch with my friend Anna and uh, also my first and probably only Joe's Pizza of this trip. It's just, it's so good. And you know what? Food in New York right now has been so expensive. Like, ridiculously expensive. Um, and if you can't already tell, I'm on a pretty tight budget lately. Uh, so, $4 for a pizza slice, that's good. And it's good pizza. So I'll pop down to Soho and sort of lower Manhattan area and uh, taking photos on the X-H2 and I'm still testing vlogging with the Fuji X-H2S. Been really enjoying it. Apologies for the last vlog. My audio levels were a little bit crunchy. They were a little bit too high. Um, I thought, you know, it's all fine. I tested it in my hotel and spoke at a high volume, but it turns out that the added noise of New York just pushed it over the edge a little bit. Um, so it's still tweaking and working that out and uh, I've dropped it. It's now down to like negative 22 decibels. So I'm starting off uh, with the 33mm f1.4. This is a lens I've been wanting to use for quite a while, ever since it came out. Had it loaned to me, got busy with releasing the print store and everything and I haven't been able to like go out and shoot with it. Been fortunate enough to bring it with me to New York. So again, this is on loan from Fujifilm. And uh, in the previous video, I really enjoyed the 56 1.2. I think, I think I'm going to switch to the 56 later, uh, but we're going to start off with the 33mm, which is around the focal length that I absolutely adore, which is my favourite lens, the 35 f2. Let's see if this competes. I am obsessed with these metal delivery trucks that are everywhere. In the UK, it's only the UPS ones that have this style, but here it seems like FedEx, UPS, USPS, and all the others, they've just got this like really industrial, old school style still rocking about and uh, I love them. This particular image, I was like, you know what, this needs a little bit of foreground interest and there's a tree in front. So what I did is I just raised the camera up above my head, took a picture through the trees and uh, I think it just looks so much better that way. Just a little tip for you, find a bit of layering to your images and you can add some depth and a bit of visual interest. It's also just one of the greatest logos ever. And there we go, there's another one. Love it. Oh man, I thought whilst I was in New York, I'd uh, come and stop by Dispatch, the place where uh, I get my camera straps. And uh, they had stores in uh, San Francisco, where they're originally from, and then New York, and then one in Tokyo. And I knew it was on this street, Elizabeth Street, and uh, they're not here anymore. I think COVID got them. Man. Oh, I'm kind of gutted about that. I wish we had one in London, and um, yeah. I've just searched as well, and the one in Tokyo is gone. At least San Francisco still exists, and of course, online, but... Man, I'm really gutted about that. It was one of my favorite stores. Do you have um, dispatch clothes? It's another hot one today, and uh, September has been brilliant. September has always been my favorite month. I think it's just got like a really nice like sense of newness to it. So for the UK and quite a few places around the world, um, September is when school starts and so then that also is when college starts and when the university year starts. And so I've just always had these chapters of newness and I've started jobs in September. So many things in my life have happened in September and it's just like a really nice transitional period before autumn. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's also, it happens to be one of the busiest seasons for travel 
Um, and in terms of like working for travel, so like press trips and other things, so much happens between September and so much happens between September and October. It's kind of wild. Um, so I always keep it free, and uh, there's pretty much always something that comes up. So hence this trip. So kind of in that like mid-afternoon stage where the light is just a little bit flat. It's not quite dramatic, like uh, say midday where you got half shadows, but it's not quite glowing. It's just lit. <laughs> So um, I'm going to take a wander around a little bit, um, but the types of images I'm looking to get, there's a few things I have in mind when I think of New York. And there's things like the, uh, the crossroads where they've got like the pavement, uh, the, uh, the black and white walking areas. Uh, there's all the fire escapes up on the buildings, some of the brickwork and the stone and other things. Um, so I want to get some images that feature those vibes. But then likewise, I also want to get some like big views of the city. I mean, New York is a big place. Some of these buildings, absolutely giant. So I think a little bit later I'm going to try and find some views and uh, this is kind of my last shot of it. It's the only time that I'm actually going to see sunset here in New York on this trip now and uh, I've, I've literally got one shot to get some golden golden images and maybe some Alpen glow. As you know I love the Alpen glow, that pinky sky. We'll see if we can capture it later. And for all the images that you've seen so far I've been editing those with my Urban Stone Volume 2. The link is in the description if you want to get those. Uh, so that is perfect for stone-based destinations. Cities such as New York, places like London, Chicago, Paris, most places in Europe. So many destinations where stone is a massive feature. Picking up those is a massive support to the channel and uh, they've got like a nice subtle sort of style to them. Um, but I really enjoy the aesthetic and uh, they're what I use to edit all my images. Likewise, if you want to support the channel further with one of my prints, uh, then you can grab that from the same store link because the store is only open for a tiny bit longer. Appreciate your support. That's Chinatown now, and uh, Chinatowns around the world always have some of the best vibes. There's always so much activity here, and immediately I'm, uh, I'm seeing color and interest. Switch into the 56mm 1.2 now. The 33 was nice, and uh, I think it was a, you know, a good lens to use, but I had so much enjoyment with this 56 yesterday, and I think here, in terms of isolating like a small subject and small point of interest, that's where that extra focal length really helps. A place like New York, you either want to get everything in super wide or you want to get in on the details. And I think 33, oddly, uh, was kind of sitting in the middle for me, um, which is interesting because I've spent the last four years or so shooting 35mm and loving that. Um, but anyway, in the hand, this lens being a little bit shorter but a little bit wider, um, just, I don't know, it feels really nice to use. I really enjoy it. a bit this afternoon. I've, uh, I'm struggling to find some images that I think are like, you know, quintessentially all-encompassing New York. I'm looking for that like real New York image. You know, I've been here many times and got multiple images of like little moments and stuff, but I just want something that just screams New York. And I've had an idea. There was something we did last time we were in New York and I loved it so much. I'm gonna do it again. Stop for a few of these, because they're brilliant.
that now, uh, which is free, and I think slower <laughs> from what I remember. Life's happening. Timing of that return trip was spot on. Much easier to take photos from the Staten Island Ferry as well. I took, <laughs> I don't know, maybe a few hundred images on that return journey and uh, I was waiting for some of the, uh, the birds and just choosing some of the focus. One of the things that I did, uh, which I think elevated the image, is I dropped my elevation. I, uh, I went onto the lower deck and you get flatter across the water. It just looks so much better than being on the upper deck, which is where you uh, originally enter the boat. I hope you've enjoyed this vlogging on the XH2S. Check out this video if you wanna see some of my setup on how I'm vlogging with this and some of the other settings and little quirks and things that I've got around to make it workable for both photo and video. And I'll see you there. All right, thanks for watching. See you later, bye bye.